G'day folks, it's Rob here and in this week's video I'm going to be giving you a bit of a look at how the new aquaponics system's growing, also running through component by component for you folks who want to knock together something similar in your own backyard and I'll also be running through at the end for the same people and whoever's curious a few little tweaks I'd like to do just to get this thing running nice and smoothly. Just quickly before we have a look at the system, I just wanted to thank you folks who have subscribed to the channel and come along every week and say good day down in the comments section. I really do appreciate it. Love saying good day to you guys and also catching up with any questions you might have. Also too, a huge thanks to those folks who are supporting us by buying our Backyard Aquaponics Beginner's Guide. It's a fairly comprehensive guide for anyone who's curious and new to aquaponics and wants to build a small little system in their own backyard. It teaches you all about aquaponics, how to build some components, how to build a small system system, also what sort of fish may suit you and also what sort of plants you might want to start out with as well as loads of other information so there will be a link down there in the description if you want to check out that guide there's a bit of a video you can suss out that shows you a little bit more and a massive amount of thanks to you folks who are supporting us with small contributions through our farm your own yard patron website and also the youtube membership program thank you very much really do appreciate it i'll be posting a lot more updates very soon on this system and the farm move but anyway that's enough of that let's check in with the fish so the fish the fish are doing ah fair to okay they're a little bit off their appetite at the moment i dare say it's just basically because they are in a new tank i must say this afternoon they're looking a little bit more interested in uh, getting a, something to nibble on I did throw a small amount in this morning and they didn't really hit it with as much vigor as I thought they would seeing as the water temperature is up around about 22, 23 degrees. I left the feed in there for about 10 minutes and I only got sporadic hits so I decided to take it out and what I might do now is just toss a little bit more in just to see if they found their appetite. So I'm just going to give them roughly around about a quarter of a metric cup. We'll see if they're hungry. They may have got their appetite back. They're up there pretty high in the water column, so you never know. Oh, they're having a bit of a look. But yeah, oh yeah, one or two might have a bit of a nibble. But anyway, yeah, we'll continue on with the look at the system and then we'll come back later and check in and see how much has been eaten. The plants themselves are doing okay. I did plant out some extra lemongrass over there and there's some bits of turmeric I've popped in as well. They haven't sprouted as of yet. I did show a nutrient deficiency in the last video. But as you can see, that new growth there, the plants are looking fine and I have added nothing to it. I really didn't want to add in any iron or magnesium as of yet. I just wanted to get the fish in there producing some waste, even though they're not eating, they're still releasing ammonia and see how that goes. Just give you a quick look down here at this parsley that has been transplanted twice uh, in the last month and a bit. It did die back originally, but we do have a little shoot coming through there. So fingers crossed it will do okay. I'll come back later and tidy it up and get rid of some of the dead bits and pieces. I also rescued these green onions as well from the satellite bed. We basically ate the whites in a few different dishes and yeah, the greens went nice and a bit of a quinoa salad. So I just popped the bottom, what's that? Probably about 40 mil or inch and a half down in there. And they've already taken off. They've only been in there for three or four days. Now we'll get to the components in the system before I keep nattering on about the plants. Now this is the sump tank and it houses the heart of this system, which is the water pump. Uh, just quickly, the system design is called what I like to call a split flow or dual loop because we have two loops of water. We have one loop of water going out to the fish side, up into the fish tank there, and we have a second loop that goes out to the grow beds itself. So there's two loops. The other popular uh, way to plumb these up is a single loop, which is basically the pump puts the water into the fish tank and then the water from there flows via gravity through any filtration and then out to the grow beds. But as my filters and grow beds are at all different levels, I prefer to use the split flow or dual loop design. Now, the first component we're gonna look at is the sump tank. I was really concerned I may lose a bit of water capacity. So you may be able to make out over the back of the sump tank there, the water is up higher towards the lip than it is towards the front here. That is because I did not level out the ground that the sump tank was set up on. I basically figured I really didn't need every little inch or litre or gallon of water that this sump tank could hold. So I set it up as good as I could because it saved me pulling out pavers and leveling it all off. So as you can see, she's pretty full at the moment. We've had a fair amount of rain and I also wanted as much water from the old system in here because it's full of nutrients and bacteria. So the beds are constantly running. We're running them as constant flows at the moment. More about that later. 
You might be able to make out just down in there, there is a pump. It used to be red, as Bianca pointed out in the last video, but just due to bio slime and that sort of thing, it's turned to dark greeny black. We have a line that comes up there. Uh, the lines over the back, they run out to the grow beds, more on them in a tick. The line to the right is the line that goes out to the pump, and I am using nut and tails there just for quick release if we want to play around with the plumbing. Hose down the side there, valve to control flow and isolate from the fish tank because there's a venturi in there, can create a siphon and flow back if we don't isolate it once the water's off. There's a box over there to make sure the extension cord and the pump plug are watertight and from there the hose goes up to the fish tank. Now it is connected to the fish tank using a nut and tail fitting that is screwed onto a PVC fitting that is placed on a pipe that runs through a uni seal in the wall of the tank and then we have the venturi fittings on the inside. You might be able to make out the air over the back there from the venturi on the surface of the water. Now those uni seals by the way, if you are in Australia, I do sell them, link down in the description. And as you can see, um, because it's on the outside wall of the tank, just with this uneaten fish food here, it does create a bit of a swirling pattern. And geez, they have knocked a few off. G'day fellas, they're very, very curious. They just don't want to eat. So yeah, that is the basic hookup for the fish tank. Now there is also an air stone, by the way, down the back there, giving air to the water or oxygen in particular for the fish to breathe. Now when these little fish down here do their business in the water after they've got full bellies, the solids fall to the bottom of the tank. And because of this circular motion, they're drawn to the center where they're drawn up that solids lifting pipe and it runs through the wall in the tank via another uni seal, link below remember folks, and it runs out down here via the drain work into a solid settler. Up the top there, just to show you, I do have twin 45 degree fittings glued together to make an easy sweeping curve. Below that I have a valve so I can isolate the water leaving the fish tank. It basically saves me having to wait for this water level to drop below the outlet when cleaning the filter to stop water coming back into there. Just a great little isolation point. We have a rubber cuff joining the pipework there. Another sweeping 45 degree and that runs into the pipe that runs through the wall of the radial flow satellite with a uni seal. There is another 90 degree bend in there using twin 45s yet again. And the outlet terminates up the top here where all the water and the solids are distributed inside this stilling well. I won't show you the whole build. There's a video on this on how these guys work and another one on a build. If you want to click on it up there, it's in a playlist. So anyway, the water and the solids come up here into a large diameter pipe which redirects the flow downwards. And because it's a larger diameter, the velocity of the water slows slightly. So some of the large solids fall down the bottom. When the water exits that stilling well inside, the water velocity slows again. So even more solids, solids accumulate on the bottom so they can be taken out by my little DIY drain fitting on the inside there via this pump and can be used to either fertilize plants around the backyard or put in a mineralization tank like I used to have but I haven't got set up at the moment. So that's basically um, how the water enters and how we remove the waste. You could just do this, um, let it drain by gravity, but if you do that, you do find you waste a lot of water. And by the way, one thing I do have on here, a water saving feature, is this little pipe here. It's actually a 90 degrees on the inside and the pipe runs down a fair way. So I can turn that valve and drain off, siphon off the water into the sump tank when the water in there is low enough. Uh, so we can get the majority of the water out of here. So when I clean the filter, I'm only using a little bit of water to get all the muck on the bottom out. Otherwise, you've got to empty the whole lot and that's a waste of water in my eyes. So yeah, that's that side. As I said, other videos in the playlist, check it out, link in the description. The outlet here is basically a pipe with a hole in the wall with a uni seal connected with a rubber cuff leading into the bio filter or moving bed bioreactor. The in pipe there is a 90 degrees elbow. Uh, the pipe runs down, it is full of slits and holes and actually used to be the outlet in the previous bio filter we had in the other system. And the outlet over here is the inlet from the other bioreactor we had in the other system. I was actually asked why I swapped these around in a recent video comment. The reason being is I have the holes very close to the top here. If I had a T-piece here to stop the siphon occurring, if I use the downpipe exit, um, yeah, it would sit over the top here and I couldn't close the drum properly. Also too, on this side here, because this is water coming in, 
and the level of the water is just there on this side here. I can't basically siphon the radial flow settler dry, so a nice 90 degrees delivers the water down and the, below the base of the media pack. The water then has to travel up through that media pack, so the bacteria have access to all the water, where it is then taken off the top here and then delivered down into the sump tank. Now in the last video you would have seen this as just a little bit of bubbling on one side. Uh, I did, wasn't happy with that because the media isn't at a nice sort of slow boil as it is at the moment. Or just one side was. So what I did was spliced in a T-fitting, then run two bits of hose down either side of the collector there and popped an air stone on the ends. And that is pretty much well spreading the air further around the drum so we only have a little bit of uh, media stuck around the rim there and that yeah there's nothing wrong with that that you might be able to see the media below that is moving slightly so i'm not really concerned about just a little bit hanging around the outside we have a nice boiling um, on the inside the bacteria has loads of air to help it do its process and we have a nice exit flow out into the sump tank and the lid fits on nice and snug i mean this drum here cost me, I think it was 10 or 15 bucks, 200 litre, 55 gallon drum. You can get screw top ones, the old olive drums, but the problem is they taper in at the top, which makes um, putting plumbing at the top and down the bottom, because they taper at the bottom, a little bit of a challenge. So I just like these straight wall barrels. And these lids, they're hanging on um, tight enough for me. I could put a brick on top to make sure it didn't blow off in a cyclone. But yeah, I think it's gonna do the job just fine. And as I said before, the water just comes from there down into the sump tank where it is picked up by the pump again and delivered out to the plant side. And I'll actually go around the other side and we'll start talking about the plant side of things. So just around the other side, and as you can see, even though it's underwater, I do have a nut and tail fitting on there just to make these hoses quick release, easy to take on and off. And all those clamps down there, by the way, a bit of a pointer, are 316 stainless steel. So that basically means that they won't rust and perish while they're underwater. You can see that the nut on that one isn't stainless steel where the actual strapping is. That one really should be replaced, but we'll see how we go, see how long the system is kept here. Now, that line over the back is the one that goes to the big bed. This line over here comes out the side and there is a T here. And I don't necessarily use stainless steel outside, but it does help if you have them on hand. And we have it split so one line goes down the back to the dual root zone. And this other line comes up to a valve here and then into the back corner of this grow bed. And this grow bed is set up as a flood and drain. Although at the moment I do have the bell siphon out because of the amount of rain I wanted to save the water. I don't think the plants in here want the warrigal greens and the lemongrass up the back and the turmeric are gonna complain about it being constant flood at the moment because they are transplants and they will be getting a little bit of shock. There's actually another turmeric rhizome I popped in just in there. But yeah, just because it's winter, it hasn't shot yet. We'll see how that one goes. Now the other line, it goes straight out the back and runs underneath, up the side, another valve to control the flow rate and flows into the back corner of this big trough bed. It is basically a dual root zone bed. Now this is a growing style I've had pretty good success with, especially with root crops like ginger, and we did some sweet potato and also potatoes as well. It's basically water flowing underneath this clay and it comes to a drain down the other end where it flows out into the sump. So there's basically a constant layer or level of water down there. And as you can see, it sort of slightly wicks up through this media. Now these pouches that are in here, I just basically work them down into the wet zone. Water enters the bottom, soaks up through the sand that I like to put in the bottom. I don't like having organic sitting in nutrient rich water. And then that goes up to the soil. And as you can see, these are little ball chilies, or actually they're capsicums or sweet peppers. These guys have taken off really well since they've been put in here. They were looking, yeah, pretty bad after I gave them a massive haircut, but they've bounced back really well. Deep green leaves. The fruit didn't fall off. I half expected them to fall off because they were on there as little bubbers when we did the transplant and hacked them back. Transplanted straight out of clay into soil down in there and they seem to have done all right. I will be cutting them back to just one or two plants in that little pouch there. Over the back we have some lemongrass. It has put on a little bit of um, extra growth but it hasn't done yeah, as well as I thought it would. I thought it may have bounced back a bit sooner, but we're only just in the first week of spring here, so a little bit more heat, she might fly out of the gate then. 
just around here we have a black turmeric it was also transplanted from the other aquaponic system oh, i forgot to mention so is the lemongrass and while it doesn't look that crash hot and healthy this is what our soil turmeric did that's also black turmeric that is what it does every winter it just dies completely back uh, there's a couple of turmeric ones down there there's another turmeric one there's turmeric in the ground there they just die back through winter here that's our queensland our root so yeah it's always going to stay green so they always die back in winter but the aquaponics ones this year didn't so I'm thinking aquaponics might be the way to grow this black turmeric and get it producing all year round. These small shoots were actually small shoots that were set through winter. So that's a bit of a bonus as well. Now down here in this bed, we also have a volunteer tomato and I'm thinking about just letting it grow in there just to see what happens. Um, yeah, because I don't know how long this system will be in here. Now the other line, as we said before, comes out under here, another valve into this bed here which it was moved down from the other aquaponic system and it is just set up as a flood and drain as well. I have had to add a little bit of extra um, length to the shroud though because um, I forgot to put in a taller media shroud. So that media shroud ends there, which is about an inch below the top of the clay there. So I just slipped this on, drilled a few holes in the top, otherwise it acts like a big bell siphon. And yeah, just screw that on, so easy access. And as soon as the water level drops in the sump down there, both these beds will go back on to flood and drain. So as for how these beds drain out, you can see the inlet for the dual root zone over the back there, a few bubbles coming up. It's just running straight under the top surface of the water. The bed above the sump, that's the one in the, um, right there in the middle of the screen entering in. And down here we have the other large um, bed just off to the side and a bit of a twig. And yeah, so just running as a constant flow at the moment, doing their thing, um, basically processing any ammonia that makes it through there, which I don't think a lot would after it goes through the moving bed biofilter or bioreactor. But yeah, it's doing its job, forming the second loop of our dual loop or split flow system. That is the pretty much well a bit of a wrap up of the system. Now, as for things I would change, we'll start down here with the dual root zone bed because I stuffed up big time. Uh, just pop underneath here and you might be able to make out there is a bit of a bulge in the base. So I'll try and get the camera on a better angle for you, but we're looking horizontally across the base and you can see that plastic has bulged down, the height of the pipe and then some. So, uh, what I need to do is get a jack and pop it under the center there and try and lift it up as far as I can. And then I'm going to slide some boards pretty much all under there and another one under there and just try and support the base a little bit. I figure if I put the jack in the center, it's going to make it a lot easier to um, spread the load and lift it. The other thing I will be doing is removing the standpipe that is in here, which I'll chat about in a minute. Uh, so we can get the bulk of the water out and reduce the weight a fair bit. Now a few people have also pointed out that um, I should have this set up like Steve's. I mean there's a lot of shoulds in the world, I don't listen to many of them. Um, Steve has a fantastic system. Um, go and click that link up there or down in the description to an interview I did with Steve and links to his um, YouTube channel. I'm not doing it the same as him. Um, these, This bed isn't flooding and then draining, drawing oxygen down through the top of the soil. These are fabric pouches. The oxygen would be drawn in from the side. I find using this method here, which I've grown wicking for uh, well over a decade now, I will do just fine. Whether it's in aquaponics, whether it's in a basin or tub of water, it does really well. The plants always thrive in it. Just the way these guys have taken off is pretty much all proof um, as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, there's a couple of little assassin bugs on there as well. It's pretty cool to see. Maybe there's a couple of aphids I need to check out. But anyway, yeah, um, I'm. The only thing I really think I need to fix on this is just the bulging, bulging bum and then we should be right to go. I'm actually going to use this as a bit of a nursery bed. We have a load of gingers and turmerics and other plants we want to take cuttings from, dwarf and mulberries and also moringa. And I'm thinking about using this as the nursery, popping the pouches in here, keeps nice constant moisture in the base of the soil and start them off so when we move to the farm we can just take one or two specimens and leave the bulk of it here. This one here could have a few issues down the track if I was to leave it. I don't know if the camera is picking it up but there's a bit of a green hue just there. If I left this here for more than a couple of months 
what would happen is the whole wall would become um, encrusted with algae on the inside. Not only that, if this wasn't UV stabilised it would affect the plastic as well. Um, so that would be a big issue. I'm not really worried about it because this system will be moving and algae really wouldn't use up a load of nutrients I don't think, not for the size fish I have in here. There would still be nitrogen within the system, enough for the plants. Uh, one issue you can see here is we have a bit of a bulge in the IBC. Now if this was cladded properly that would be supported, cladding meaning timber zapped across the whole end. Um, this would be supported and wouldn't be an issue but it is something I'm going to have to keep an eye out just in case the water actually it's not far off it at the moment not where those holes are anyway um, might flow over and out there so good thing the standpipe isn't too high and again it'll just flow down into the sump tank anyway just back around the other side of the grow bed I'll show you another ish issue we have actually a couple this is the line from the pump as we saw before even the kookaburras are laughing at me now um, it comes up here on the ground and into the fish tank. Now you folks uh, who have been in aquaponics for a while or any plumbing will notice straight away this is a pressure line with no hose clamp here and I don't know if you can see that but there is some water dripping out of there uh, so I really need to come down after I finish here and put a hose clamp on there just to make this secure and yeah the leaks will stop I just disturbed it that's the only reason it's leaking. Now that needs to be done not only that the fact that this pipe is just laying on the ground could become a trip hazard not only for myself but also for Jack the dog he could come running through here chasing a lizard and trip over that and especially if that wasn't on properly he could pull that out I'm not worried about the fitting sliding through because it's screwed on the other side and these uni seals are generally pretty tough but definitely could rip that off if I don't get that clamp on there or just basically either of us could hurt ourselves if we trip so what I need to do is cut off some of this hose. Basically there's a bit of a gap um, underneath the filters there and I can slot the hose pipe underneath there, have it come up underneath this pipe here and then reattached on to the fitting here, of course using a hose clamp. So I'll do that after I finish filming here and I'll post a picture to the community tab. By the way, I do post to the YouTube community tab. If you want updates during the week, yeah, you can check it out. It's over on my homepage. But yeah, that is something I will do after I um, finish filming this and edit the video and get it up for you to watch. As mentioned before, the water from the old aquaponic system has been used to top up this system as much as it can. And the remaining nutrient rich water and solids that were left in there were used to feed up the lime tree and the mango tree down the back. Now she's just sitting up there in need of a good pressure wash at the moment, uh, ready to go to a new home. So if there are any supporters out there who would, you know, are local and interested in an aquaponic system as is, maybe with a pump, maybe without, we'll have to chat. Let us know in uh, over on the member sites, either the YouTube member page or the Farm Your Own Yard one. Only old people don't just join so you can get a bit of a bargain, folks. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much all it. Once again, thanks for coming along, thumbing up the videos and chatting to me down below. Really do appreciate it. Thanks to the folks who have purchased the guide and those who are supporting us on the various, various different platforms. I should learn to take a breath. Uh, anyway, I'm pretty much all going to leave it there, try and edit this and get it up for you supporters tonight and everyone else on YouTube will see it tomorrow evening. So I do hope you're having a fantastic weekend and your gardens and aquaponics are booming and I'll catch you later. Cheers folks and happy growing. Hey there Jackie boy. Well, have I bored you to sleep have I? Do you want to go play some ball? Toss a ball? What do you reckon? <laughs>